everybody. My name is Zoe. You can find me everywhere on the internet as Pins and Needles UK. And if you check the drop down box below, you'll find links to all the things that I talk about. Um, this is a slightly different sort of vlog, one that I haven't done before. And this is going to be filmed over the next six weeks because I have been, I applied and was successful in test knitting a pattern release by, by Susan Crawford. I'm going to be test knitting her Hutton cardigan and today is, what's today, the 12th of July and the deadline to finish this test knit is the 28th of August and I don't have a final release date yet for the pattern but she said autumn. Now I can't um, show my progress on social media or my YouTube channel or anything until after the release. So what I'm going to do is film a little project diary basically and I'll take you along with me during the test knit. It might mean that um, my normal podcast episodes between now and the end of August are a little bit um, thin on the ground for knitting content because this is a big knit. Um, I'm sorry if there's street noise. <laughs> it's a warm day and I've got the front window open and it's quite a busy road. Anyway, so the pattern I have, and there's an ice cream van. <laughs> there we go, I think it's moving away. Um, the pattern that I've been sent to work from has been tech edited, but it's not in the final format that it will be released to the general public in. Um, and obviously I can't show you the details of the pattern, but I can show you the front cover. So it is a long line cardigan with a shawl collar and a belt, long sleeves in this beautiful houndstooth pattern. And I'll pop a picture in up here of Susan Crawford's um, own social media post where she called for test knitters. So I'm safe in sharing that with you. Although I won't be releasing this until the pattern's released. Anyway, the point is you can now see all the information that I had when I applied to do the test knit. Um, if anybody hasn't heard of Susan Crawford, um, she's a fantastic British designer, um, farmer and producer of One Farm Yarns. You might have come across some of her previous publications. She did the Vintage Shetland Project. I, th um, I think she's done a Stitch in Time books as well. I'll leave a link to her website. And she's also produces um, her own range of yarns. This one, uh, this cardigan, she knitted in her own yarn, which is called Barn. Um, and she also has some Exolana 4 ply, which she um, produces um, with her vintage patterns in mind. So I decided it's a DK weight pattern. And because it's a long line cardigan and it's a slip stitch pattern, it doesn't half need an awful lot of yarn. Um, so I decided I'd make it out of our own yarn, out of Cartred yarn, um, because I've got a spare room full of it <laughs> and didn't really want to have to um, buy more yarn. And also it will be nice, um, because it's going to be so cosy and warm, it will be really nice for me to have for festivals, like when we go back to Wonderwall next April, it's usually freezing. So a really nice thick cardigan to wear on a stand and to showcase Carter of Yarn, I thought would be a good idea. I was pondering colors. Um, it's a two color pattern. Um, and I've, it's not dry yet. I've literally just uh, pinned my swatch out to dry. And I used, um, Glow, which is our uh, one of our neutral colourways, it's a charcoal grey, and Glow means coal in Welsh. And I paired it with Flam, our orange colour, and that means flame. And before any of you leave me a comment, yes, I know I mucked up the pattern in the middle, <laughs> but it's just a tension square, so nobody panic. So hopefully that will focus. So there we go. I measured my tension before I wet blocked it and I was just a fraction shy of hitting the right tension. Um, and although I've pinned it out, I haven't stretched it 
at all. I've just gently smoothed it. So I'll wait for it to dry, which shouldn't take too long as it's a sunny day. And I'll be able to get the final gauge. Um, but I'm pretty certain I'll be absolutely fine. The pattern recommends four millimetre needles and that's what I'll go with because, yeah, I'm familiar with the yarn. I've knitted on four millimetre needles with it previously and I know it works out well. But I've decided against this colour combination. Um, I fancied the Glow, so it would be a nice neutral colour that would go with everything. Um, and I do love our Flam colourway. But you end up in the pattern section with an almost equal split between the two colours. So my main colour would be Glow, my contrast would be Flam. And actually, in the main pattern bit of the sweater, there's going to be an awful lot of orange. And I'm not sure that's what I wanted. But the tension square is fine. Um, so I changed my mind. And in the end, I've decided to go with our purple colourway. This is called Coron. And it means royal. And it's this gorgeous sort of purpley slightly reddish purple colour that I absolutely love. Um, so that's going to be my main colour. And then for my contrast colour, I'm going to use our undyed colourway, which we call Natirial. This is how it comes to us from the mill. This is five 100 gram um, skeins of yarn, hanks of yarn, and the fifth skein wraps around the other four, so you get this rather handy, looks a bit like a mop head. <laughs> Um, and according, I'm knitting the third size. This is a long line cardigan with um, six to 10 inches of positive ease. And I fell in between the third and fourth size. So I've gone for the third size because of this um, extra ease. So I need seven and a half, yes, seven and a half skeins of my main color. And I think I need five or five and a half of the contrast. I think it's five. So I've pulled all the yarn out. This is, as I said, this is a whole five skeins. And then in another bag down here, I've got um, all of my purple colourway. Um, now, as part of a test knit, um, Susan wants to know exactly how much yarn you use. So I've pulled all of it out according to the requirements in the pattern. And I will weigh everything before I start. And then I'll weigh my leftovers at the end. And that's how I'll be able to get an exact weight and meterage of yarn. So there we go. I think I'm going to find the purple and the material a much more wearable colour. Um, it will go with more things in my wardrobe. And also this is one of our most popular colourways. So I think it would be good to have a garment knit up in that for our, um, for our customers to see. So I'm going to go and wind up two skeins of each colourway and get casting on and I will check back in with you when I've made some progress.
Pattern Cardigan update. It's Wednesday the 11th of August, about half past six in the evening. So, hello Jim, you come to join us. Um, apologies if the light isn't too amazing. Um, I am just starting to panic that I won't quite get this cardigan finished in time, but I'm gonna absolutely give it my best shot. Now, the last time we spoke, I had finished the bottom ribbing and started work on the body pattern and it was coming along quite nicely. Well, I have done quite a bit since then. It's all rather unwieldy at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to show you as best as I can. So I think I was kind of down here the last time we spoke um, and I knitted up to this point and then you divide the fronts and backs apart from each other and start knitting those separately to make these slots for the pockets. Later on in the pattern, I knit pocket bags to attach to them. So you knit one front up to this point, then you knit the back up to the same point, then the other front up to that point. And when you've done the splits for each of the three sections, you join them all back together. And I must confess that this this bit of knitting from rejoining the pockets to the underarm split was quite a lot of knitting because the rows were enormous. Um, one thing I did notice with this is the difference between my different sets of cable needles, interchangeable needles. For a very long time, I've had a, a slightly motley assortment of knit picks interchangeables, combination of wood tips, their symphonies, their Nova tips, and some um, acrylic ones from when I very first started knitting. Um, and whilst I love the wooden tips and the, what did I just say, the Novas, um, when I had all of these stitches in one on one needle, I was really feeling it in my elbows. Um, the joins for the cables are fixed and at the time my 100 centimetre higher higher stainless steel cable was in use in my other cardigan that I'm knitting the colour work one I'm doing um, so I thought oh I won't bother swapping it out I'll just use my knit pro cables that'll be fine and it was fine but by the time I had all this weight on it um, they weren't, I was really missing the swivel in the cable drawing and it was starting to make my elbows hurt. So I swapped out, I rescued the cable from my other cardigan, swapped it out for my higher hires and with the swivel join and that is way more comfortable. Um, I'm still, I used the old Knit Picks cables just instead of stitch holders for the back and things like that because I can put the cable stoppers on and then when I come back to this section, it's much easier to put, to knit off the old cable onto my higher stainless steels. Anyway, 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 I have got as far, so I finished the main body and here you can see the left front. It's a little scrunched up. Um, but this beautiful stitch marker that was a present from lovely Jenny of Owl About Yarn marks the start of the neck decreases so you see it's got a slight v-neck to it and um, the arm side is straight so the cardigan is going to have a drop shoulder style and these stitches are on hold for when I need to join it to the back. The back is waiting for its turn that's still at armpit height and I've just started the right front and I'm really enjoying it. I'll show you my insides. So there's my inside, very pleasingly tidy. And there's all the expanse of the slip stitch houndstooth pattern. And I've still got quite a way to go. So I will probably finish the other front tonight if I knit like the wind. Then I've got to knit the back to the same length and then I three needle bind off the shoulders then it's picking up the sleeves and you knit down from the armholes, big cuff. And then you pick up a knit for the enormous shawl colour. So today is the 11th. This is supposed to be done by the 28th of August. 
um, and I'm going to do my best. <laughs> um, the, I'm enjoying knitting it very much. I confess I'm a, getting a little bit bored just because I can't knit anything else at all. I haven't touched anything else really since I started this. And I do like to work on more than one thing at a time, but um, I've committed to this, so I've just got to keep cracking on with it. Um, it's interesting taking part in the test knit for this. I was one of the latest ones to get, mm, not quite the latest ones, but in the middle batch of people to get going. So a lot of people are ahead of me. And so they've picked up any of the pattern writing issues or idiosyncrasies and things like that. Um, so every time I sit down to start a new section, I have to make sure I've got the most recent pattern update um, and I'm nipping back into the Slack group because people have said, oh, when I found this bit, I found if I did this instead, it looked a bit better. So, so yeah, I'm really enjoying being part of the test and I, think, I still think I'll get a lot of use out of the cardigan. Um, fortunately, our heat wave passed because that was a bit of a challenge, having this much yarn in your lap in the middle of a heat wave. It's back down to about 21 degrees Celsius now. So yeah, I just, I, I've taken it to work with me a couple of times, but I don't know why I bother because I never have time to knit it. <laughs> I've done a couple of really long shifts. I've done two 14 hour days this week. Um, today, I usually work from home, but I've given myself completely the day off apart from cooking and laundry. And I haven't even bothered cooking dinner. I've just sent Max down to the chippy and we're all gonna have a chippy tea. Um, which means no cooking and also no wall washing up. So I'm going to crack on with the other front. Um, and yeah, I think I'm not too far off joining everything together, maybe another four days, depending how it goes. But certainly by the weekend, I want to be at the point where I'm joining everything together and starting to pick up for the sleeves. So yeah, that's how I'm getting on. I'll check back in um when i get to the next section hi everybody next installment of my cardigan vlog i can't even remember the name of the cardigan anymore that might be important yeah it might be i'm sure i've mentioned it before anyway it's that cardigan that i'm knitting it's the title of this vlog how much more do you need for me okay so today is sunday the 29th of august and um the smarter ones amongst you may have realised that I was supposed to be finishing this cardigan by yesterday. That was the test knit deadline. And yet here we are without a finished cardigan. Um, yeah, not there were quite a few of us test knitting and probably eight of us have finished the whole thing from start to finish. Um, and quite a few of us are still at the stage that I am at. So since I last spoke, I have finished knitting the fronts and the backs. I've got back neck stitches on hold, uh, stitch holders and the fronts and backs are joined with a three needle bind off, which you normally do with the right sides together. But this pattern has you do it with the wrong sides together, making this feature of the main color. And hopefully you can see that it forms a little ridge. So that's quite a nice design detail. Um, and I have also knitted one sleeve. Now this sleeve has got to come out. Um, I made some slight changes to this sleeve. The first of which is I was between sizes. I was, I've knitted a size three, but I was between the three and the four. I went down a size rather than up a size because I didn't want huge amounts of positive ease in this cardigan just for the time constraints and the yarn requirements and things like that. So actually what I'll do is I'll pop this on. I'm still attached to one ball of yarn. I need to make sure I don't get myself in a tangle. There we go. So this doesn't have quite as much positive ease on me as the pattern would suggest. Um, it's a drop shoulder design, so here's where you would expect a sleeve to come. And so it's a good few inches longer than that. But according to other people's finished objects, 
it really should have finished an extra two inches lower down my arm. It's almost mid bicep it's supposed to be. So the pattern has you do a very small number of rounds of the sleeve straight before you start these very sharp decreases. And to make up for the sleeve starting higher up my arm, I increased the length of the straight part of the sleeve, which has resulted in this rather weird flabby bit here, which just tons of excess fabric that I really don't like very much. And the super sharp decreases, you decrease every other round, that's part of the pattern. Ooh, yeah, not a huge fan, it just looks a bit, just looks like I've got massive bingo wings basically. Um, and then I had to lengthen the overall sleeve because I've got long arms because I'm tall. So yeah, not happy with this longer straight bit, not happy with this weird bingo wing bit. And honestly, it's probably not quite long enough anyway. So I've just picked up, can you see, for the sleeve on the other side, and I'm going to knit this one differently. I will put more space between the decreases than the pattern calls for, just that will automatically give me some more length and it'll reduce this slightly weird flappy bit here. Um, and I'll make sure it, the design is supposed to have this extra long cuff. Don't really think I like that either. I want just a normal two inch cuff at the bottom. Um, and given that I've already missed the test knit deadline, I mean, really, it's pretty much free reign. Um, and clearly I've still got the button band to pick up and knit. I'm very glad that I put these two removable stitch markers on at the point where I started the decreases because when I pick up the stitches to do the massive button band and shawl collar, she gives you stitch counts for each section. So up to here and then from there to the shoulder and then around the back. So it's handy to have these markers in. And these beautiful markers were a gift from Jenny of All About Yarn. You can either use the lobster claw end as a removable marker or the ring end. So that's where I've got to. I do also have to do the pockets I'm not sure if I put you back a bit, if you'll be able to see the overall length. Let's try that. Oh, there you are, that gives you an idea. So it definitely sits nice and snugly just under my bum and it'll gain a bit of length when I block it. I haven't done the pocket bags yet. Some testers have said that knitting it, this is the DK weight Cartrow yarn, and some people have said that doing the pocket bags in DK makes it very bulky. Um, and because it does sit on your hips, a lot of people said it just doesn't sit right. So some knitted the pockets, took the finished object photos for the testing process and then took them back out and either sewed them up or um, did some other alterations. I might try four ply pocket bags and if I don't like them, I'll take them out. So again, on most other testers, it was definitely mid thigh level like really much quite a bit longer a good six inches longer again i chose not to do proportionally the same length just because of the amount of yarn it would have used but it will definitely gain a couple of inches in blocking and it will be plenty long enough there we go so now that i have shown you how far i've got with my dodgy bingo wing sleeve I do like that ridge though, I think that's really smart. I wasn't sure about it, um, but I like it. Yeah, so now I can carry on with the other sleeve or I might just pick up and do the button band just for a break from this pattern before I completely lose my mind. Yeah, there you go.